Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Art of Photography Vlog Edition. My name is Ted Forbes. I'm a little bit better mood today, in a little bit better place. And uh, uh, if you don't follow the blog, I'm not gonna recap anything. You can go watch the previous videos. In a nutshell, um, we lost, um, or I lost my oldest cat this week, uh, who was 11, had been with me a long time, and it's been a really tough week. And I'm coming out of it uh, a little bit with a very positive sense. And part of that is due to a lot of the comments you guys have left in videos, which I greatly appreciate, the emails that have been sent. Um, but Today, I kind of, you know, in the last couple of days, it's interesting because, you know, having such a passion for photography, and I knew this would kind of be something that would get me through it and make me think differently. And I'm sure everybody that's watching this can agree with that. Um, you're probably not watching this if you're not a photographer or a big photography fan. Uh, but today I'm gonna talk about the work of somebody named William Wegman, who is an American photographer who is, um, I'll say in his, his words, paraphrased, uh, that either he's a uh, famous photographer who's known for shooting dogs, or he has a very famous dog that he happens to photograph, uh, which I always thought was a great comment. And if you followed the podcast for a while, or remember when I did a couple years ago, an audio podcast with my friend Wade Griffith, who's another photographer, um, I definitely went on the record in that podcast, and this was several years ago, saying I couldn't stand the work of William Wegman. It was just not something I cared for. Um, and certainly this has come to light in the last couple of days because of the events of the last week. Um, but actually, it goes back earlier than that. About a year ago, um, I was hanging out with a friend of mine who uh, is an artist, um, does a lot of paint work, and uh, my buddy Jeff. And... I had mentioned to him something about my disdain for William Wegman's work, and he looked at me kind of funny, and I've loved Jeff's opinion on things, and he says, uh, he says, what do you mean you don't like William Wegman? What are you talking about? I mean, you know, are you familiar with, and starts naming these things. And I said, well, no, I'm not. I mean, you know, I'll be honest, the most, the only work I can think of offhand were kind of some of the creepy photos of like people with clothes and there's a dog head. And he said, well, you know, you'd appreciate that if you got into this earlier stuff. And he introduced me to a series of early videos that Wegman had done in the early 70s um, that we were joking about. They're really poor quality in a lot of ways, <coughs> which is part of their charm. But I said something about the, you know, they're very VHS quality. And he said, oh, VHS, they're like surveillance cam quality, which I got a kick out of. Uh, but anyway, this was about a year ago. I, it was last summer when, when he introduced me to this. And then all of a sudden, I kind of got it. And it was like, okay, this is a little different. Um, to explain this, I need to make a comparison to something else that's very personal. Back when I was in college and I was studying music and I was going to be a film composer, supposedly at one point, never happened. Um, but I remember a lot of my friends and I would sit around and we were getting into stuff and you get into, you know, like you do with art. And, you know, we all, well, I definitely uh, developed an intense uh, love for the work of Frank Zappa. And we would all sit there and talk about Frank Zappa all the time and get in all the obscure stuff. Because Frank obviously had the chops, he had the compositional sense, he was a brilliant musician. But there was this whole question of, does humor belong in music, which is a Frank quote. And I think we were totally cool at the time was absolutely yes. I mean, sometimes Frank got too snarky. Um, I still love Frank's work. Uh, and Zappa was amazing. Um, but what Zappa brought into music, and I think this is how this compares to William Wegman a little bit, not just on an aesthetic level, but he brought a sense of playfulness that music doesn't always have to be this serious thing um, that is you know, somber if there's any emotion, but uh, maybe flatlined if there's not. And I'll be the first to admit, and like I, you know, well, I was thinking earlier, you know, if, if William Wegman, who's still alive, happens to watch this video for some strange reason, um, I, I owe him uh, not only an apology, but a beer. Uh, I think with photography, I tend to get kind of, um, I don't know what the word to say is because it's not intentional, but there's a little bit of a high art snootiness that comes out, and I will be the first to admit that I do that. Um, I have the, the people that I look up to, and there's this very serious quality of art all the time. And Wegman introduces something that is kind of like, it infuses, and maybe for me it was a little bit uncomfortable, but it infuses this sense of, you know, playfulness, humor, um, it's a guy shooting his dog. Uh, he's obviously a very accomplished photographer. And if you go listen to the quote that I went on record as saying, um, I, I, technically he's a very good photographer. I, and, and now I'm embracing the fact that, you know what, this is legit stuff. Um, I got up this morning and the events of the last week um, definitely influenced this. And I'll, I'll be open about that. But I was thinking about it, and actually one of the first people I thought of was Sally Mann, who is a photographer that I look up to a great deal. I love Sally's work. Um, she had some images of the family dog that were taken post-mortem, and that was just a little too creepy for me, especially because of what I've been through. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to revisit Wegman again. Uh, now that I've decided that, that 
I'm kind of cool with Wegman and I'm kind of interested in Wegman and I haven't really followed through with that. And so today I decided at my lunch break, I was going to go to the used bookstore and I would find a William Wegman book. And lo and behold, I did. And I'm going to share this with you. This is a wonderful book that I picked up. Uh, this is called uh, William Wegman, Paintings, Drawings, Photographs, and Videotapes. And this is a really nice career retrospective of Wegman's work. Um, obviously you have, uh, and I don't know, um, I should have looked this up beforehand, but this is Man Ray or Fay Ray. He had two very famous dogs. Man Ray passed away. And, and Fay Ray was the successor, and Man Ray named after the famous photographer Man Ray. Fay Ray was kind of a play on words joke, but um, anyway, uh, wonderful photos. And this, the reason I got this, and the reason I kind of like it, even though just skimming through it, there's a wonderful interview with with Wegman in here. Um, there is uh, some biography stuff. There's video stills from some of the the uh, the stuff and, and and I will put links of these in the show notes or whatever they they live on on YouTube and they're really worth watching they're very funny uh, they're very crude and very interesting all at the same time and I think if you go back if you're not as convinced like I used to be about William Wegman I think these will change your opinion uh, I mean how wonderful is this series of photos with the dog who halfs over onto the next frame um, and even when you get into a little bit the more mid career stuff that that you know. Uh, is a little bit different, like these, you know, dog covered in animal print, and you know, I mean, there's a playfulness. There's, it's funny. I mean, there's a weird sense of humor with some of this. It's, uh, I gotta say, it's, 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 it's caught my attention. It's interesting work. I mean, even when, and these are some of the photos I'm talking about, where you put a dog in a dress. Um, they're they're hilarious. I remember a friend of mine years ago trying to convince me that I should be into Wegman, and I wasn't going for it at that time. I am now. Um, you know, he said, you know, I said, obviously, he's a very technically accomplished photographer. I can't deny his skill. And he said, well, yeah, but what an odd thing to donate your career to or dedicate your career to is, is photing, photographing one breed of dog, more or less. Um, I think another thing that may have put me off, too, is early on, and if you're my age or probably a little bit older, you, you probably remember um, Wegman going on Carson and Letterman and, and the stuff he did in Sesame Street and the Nickelodeon uh, little shorts that he did. Uh, and for some reason, I think... I, I don't know, in, in, in the tendency that we all have uh, as art fans or my own to be a little bit snooty about this is that I just thought, well, hey, it can't be good art because it's just too fun. There's two takeaways that I want to talk about here. Uh, this is a little bit shorter video today. I want to make the point brief about Wegman. Um, but I think the first of all is, and I'm definitely doing this with my own work, and maybe you can do this with your own work as well, is how serious are you being and is there an element that may not be deemed serious that may be more playful maybe funny maybe humorous um, that you can inject into your own work sometimes and it's interesting because even just today and thinking about this a little bit after i've looked through the book a little bit and i'm thinking about how many people i look up to that i'm putting in that high art camp but like some guys we've talked about recently like henri cartier brisson um, he had a wonderful sense of humor, and you see that in some of his photos. There's some weird stuff. It's really trippy. It's really out there. Um, you know, I'm thinking of those photos of the guys facing the wall with the hats and the big nose. And uh, there's some very hilarious stuff sometimes. I mean, it's not laugh out loud funny, but it, it's it's a playfulness within the greatness that he was. I think Wegman really took that to an extreme, and maybe that's why it took me up until last year to warm up to him. And certainly um, with last week uh, leading up to really finding some comfort in that today. Um, but I think that's one thing to think about. I think the other thing that's interesting, and this may get a little out there and philosophical on you, um, but I think it's important too because it ties in several things. Um, Wegman, you know, I was thinking about the relationship with the pet that I had to, to uh, say goodbye to last week. and. I'm thinking Wegman is known for the work he did of, uh, let's take Man Ray for example, the, not the photographer, his dog, um, which is very funny too. But anyway, if you consider Man Ray the dog and Wegman, and when Man Ray passed, I mean, that had to have been extremely difficult for Wegman. But it's weird because like not knowing Wegman and being on my side, I don't see that in there. You don't think of, of the dog as having passed. He lives on in photographs. And several of you have said this to me in comments in the last week, and this is what got me thinking. Um, in the same way, I don't really think of Henri Cartier-Bresson as being gone. I don't, I mean, I didn't know him, obviously, but I don't think of him as somebody who's passed away. He's very much living, as far as I'm concerned, in much the Man Ray, the photographer or the dog, uh, you could say that for. Um, I think there's a lot of photographers who fall into that category. I think uh, certainly somebody like W. G. Eugene Smith, um, you know, Imogene Cunningham, some of the really great photographers 
uh, there is an element. It's like, you know, there comes a time, I think, in life, and this is where I'm going to get philosophical on you, where we all pass away. We all have to leave the shell that we're in on earth and whatever you believe in, whatever that is, you go, you move on to the next thing. And one of the most important things I think we can all try to do is how does our legacy live on? And I don't mean you need to go be a famous photographer. If you can, that's great. Um, wouldn't we all like to do that? But photography is like kind of one element of that, I think. Um, and the way we have photographs, the way we look back on photographs, sometimes a photograph may not be a great photograph, but it means something because there's something in that photograph that speaks to us. Um, having reviewed a lot of photographs of my cat this week, I, I feel that way. They're not great photos, but they mean something to me. That really is the power of photography. And it's not about so much leaving your mark as being known as a really famous photographer. It's about enjoying life. It's about uh, people and maybe animals that you love. Um, and I think it's about what you do. And what I would like to do, and I may not talk about this on the show again, but whether it's photography or whether it's something else, you know, there's we move on, but sometimes we're not gone, you know what I mean? And that's what I'm talking about with using Henri Cartier-Bresson song as that example, or Man Ray, if you're talking about a dog. Um, it's that impact that we leave on things, and sometimes that could be photography, sometimes that could be doing something nice for somebody, sometimes it could be a relationship you have with somebody. All of that makes up who we are, and I think what art should be. And all I'm going to say is just I'll leave you with that. Just think about it for a bit and, uh, you know, be thinking about what kind of legacy, what kind of impact are we trying to make on whatever it is that we love, whether it be the planet, whether it be photography, whether it be. And that's what is important. Um, anyway, without getting too weird and philosophical, I'll leave it at that. Uh, but anyway, William Wegman, check it out. I will put links to this wonderful book uh, in the show notes. You can get it really cheap on Amazon, I know. Um, and you can probably find it in a used bookstore like I did. Uh, it's a very um, uh, well uh, distributed book in its time, and it's not a hard one to find. Um, I will put links to the Man Ray, uh, the Man Ray well, Man Ray's in them, um, the William Wegman videos below. And another apology, shout out to Mr. Wegman. Um, much respect, um, very interesting work, very cool stuff. And uh, get out there and, and see if there's something that you can do to make your work more interesting in the sense that uh, you're not being too serious. Does that make sense? Anyway, hey guys, we're going to do some more stuff this week. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to talk more about push processing because I actually developed a roll of film yesterday, which started bringing me around too. Uh, we're going to talk more about the mobile darkroom um, and go headstrong into this. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff coming up, so stay tuned. Once again, guys, it's been the Art of Photography Vlog Edition. Thank you for watching. <laughs>